Both of my last two videos have been about this incredible software for this Pokemon fan game, Pokeroom. Basically, it's like the PK Hex of this game. It's a save editor that allows you to do so much crazy stuff. In my last video, there were a couple of hiccups with Pokerogue security and moving API endpoints and all sorts of technical stuff. But since then, a end-all be-all new update has been released that is future-proof with multiple different methods to log in. So today, I'm going to cover the newest update for the software, teach you how to use it, show you all the things that you can kind of do. And so without further ado, let's get into it. So just like usual, you're going to click the link in the description, and that is going to take you to this GitHub page for PyRogue, Rogue Edit, Online Rogue Editor, a lot of different names for it. And you're going to scroll down to releases here on the right and click on this V0.4.3 button. Now, if you remember from last video, this was like 0.1.2. So there have been a lot of updates in a very short amount of time. And that is gonna bring you to right here. You're gonna scroll down a little bit more. And right here, you're gonna find Pyrogue v0.4.3 for windows.zip. Now, this tool is only available for Windows, but you can run EXE files on tons of different devices. Android, there's an app called WinLater that allows you to do it pretty well. I think Wine is a universal thing for like Mac and Linux. I don't really know, I only have a Windows. But there are different ways to run this, and you can look up how to run EXE files on whatever your device is, and there's going to be stuff out there. But for this tutorial, you're going to click on this zip file right here. So once you have it all downloaded, you're going to get this zip file just like this. It's going to pop right open, and you're going to come over here. You're going to right-click, and you're going to hit Extract All. Now just extract it to your downloads. You'll be able to find it no matter what, so just hit Extract. And just like this, we're going to have the window now up and running and ready to go. Now you can delete the zip file now, if you would like to, to get rid of some clutter. But, for now, we'll just go here and we're going to open this exe file. Now again, if you have Windows, this is going to run perfectly fine. So you'll double click on that. It's going to say, Windows protected your PC, whatever, it's going to call it a virus or whatever. I promise you it is not, I've used it many a time. And all of the source code for it, if you know all this kind of stuff, all the source code for it is on the GitHub anyways. So you can take a look and run through it and make sure it's safe, but I promise you, of course it is. So you're going to say, yeah, man, I want to do it. Pretty good reference right there. You're going to have three options here. One through three are the main ones you're going to use. Four is good, but editing your own JSON can be kind of confusing, complex, whatever, saving it and re-uploading it, all this crap. So for now, we'll just go through prompts one through three. And basically, you're just going to use them in descending order if the one previous didn't work. So you're going to click one, you'll log in, and if it didn't work, you'll try prompt two, then you can try prompt three. For the purpose of this tutorial, I think prompt one is going to work perfectly fine, so we'll go prompt one, we're going to hit enter, and it's going to ask you to put in your username and password. So, I'm going to type in my username, make sure all of this is, you know, character specific, capitals where capitals should be, no spaces if there's no spaces, no special characters if there's no, you know, you get it. And now when you go to type in your password, it's not going to show you typing in your password, like it's going to, it's not, you're not going to see that you're typing, but just trust it, type your password, and hit enter. Now this blue text is going to pop up saying that it's logging you in and all this stuff, and all of a sudden, you're good. You're going to pop up and you're good. So now, I would recommend actually you open Pokerogue in a different window, that way you can take a look at your slots. So go to load game like this and you can see each of your slots. Now, if there's a specific one you want to edit, then that's where you're going to put it right here. If you don't really care and you just want to edit some stuff like your starters, other just general account stats, you won't need to worry too much about what slot you're picking. But if you do want to edit your specific party, whatever items you have in a run, then I would select the specific slot that you may want to edit. So for example, I'll go for my slot four. Now it's going to fetch my trainer data, and bam, all of a sudden it's going to open absolutely everything that I'm going to need for this tool. So you're going to have 29 prompts here, which is a lot. So let's go through them one by one. So one is creating a backup, two is recovering a backup. These are pretty self-explanatory. You type them and then it does what it says. Three you won't really need to pay attention to, but you can like refresh your current game data. Five is editing your account stats such as your achievements, similar stuff like that general stats like how many shinies you've battled, all those other random stats like that. You probably won't need to pay attention to it. It's not that cool. It is pretty cool. Now number six is very cool. 
If you want to just create eggs out of thin air, you don't need to spend any vouchers, you don't need to do anything, you can just make eggs for whatever you want. You're going to hit six and then hit enter. Now it's going to tell you how many eggs you currently have, I have zero, and because I have zero I'm just going to type two to add some. You can type one to replace ones you currently have, but most of the time you'll probably be adding some anyways because you can just hatch them. Now you can choose how many eggs you want to generate from zero to 99, pick whatever you want. I'm going to go 99 just for the sake of this. And then you can pick what tier the eggs are going to be. So you can go all the way up to Manaphy. You can give yourself 99 Manaphy eggs from the Shiny Up machine. You could do whatever you want, right? So I'm just going to go four for a legendary eggs. And of course, you can choose which gotcha machine you want them from. So I'm going to go three because that gives you the increased shiny odds. Then this is very cool. You can choose after how many waves you want them to hatch. So you could set this to like, I don't know, one. And then you battle one wave of Pokemon, you get 100 legendary eggs. So let's just do that because it's funny. This is very cool new stuff. Uh, they added you can modify the shiny rate of the eggs. Basically, it's a yes or no modifying the shiny rate, but it's still very cool. You get all the different shiny tiers for all the legendaries or all the whatevers, right? So we'll just go shiny tier three because it's gonna be really cool if we can see a bunch of epic tier shinies hatching from legendary eggs. And it's gonna give you this blue text that says 99 eggs were successfully generated. So when we go back into my game after we finalized everything, I should have 99 legendary eggs and I don't know exactly how the shininess works, but they should be all guaranteed to be epic shinies, the red stars. But anyways, seven, you can edit your egg hatch durations, so choose how many waves until your eggs hatch. Eight, you can edit how many egg vouchers you have, which is kind of old news now, but it's still really cool that you can modify exactly how many egg vouchers you have. Just remember, if you give yourself more than like 10 of the gold vouchers, 50 of the purple vouchers, 100 of the dark blue ones, I think, your account may get flagged, which we don't know entirely what that means yet. Basically, the devs of Poke Rogue are putting like a big flag on your account that says, once we implement online multiplayer functionality in the future, we're gonna not let you participate in this kind of stuff because you're cheating. But honestly, if you're cheating, you kind of deserve it anyway, so. Anyways, nine, you can edit a specific starter, which I showed off how to do in last video, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll type nine, and now there's actually auto-complete, so you can start typing in a Pokemon's name, and it's gonna auto-suggest what you're trying to type which is super cool, because that takes a lot of the guesswork out of the spelling. And you can choose whether you want them to be shiny, whether you want all abilities unlocked, whether you want the passives unlocked. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. I showed it off in the last tutorial. And it remains pretty much the same, just with more options now that it's now updated. And you can edit the candies on a starter, pretty self-explanatory. You can just edit how many candies any given starter has. With 11, you can unlock all achievements. 12, you can unlock all your vouchers. 13, you can unlock all your starters. 14, you can unlock all the game modes. 15, you can unlock everything. These are all pretty self-explanatory. The starters one, it gives you options. So again, all the passives, all the abilities, which tier of shiny you want them to be, all of this kind of stuff, it's all available and ready to edit. These session data actions are all kind of newer. So these are very cool. 16, you can edit your current party. So you can edit any of the Pokemon in your current party. It's gonna be a very similar process to all of this, right? You type 16, you hit enter, and you're gonna get more options. So you can change the species of any Pokemon in your party for any of your given runs. This is why you, you can select which slot you wanna edit. This is where you'd be able to edit it. You can edit the money amount for any given run that you have, which is very cool. It won't work on the daily runs. 18, you can edit how many Pokeballs you have. 19, you can edit your current biome, which is pretty cool. You can make it so different Pokemon spawn. And number 20 is very cool. It's a new one. You can edit your items. So you type command 20 and you hit enter. It's going to give you 79 options of all of these items you can add to any Pokemon in any slot. So if you pick an item that would be held by a Pokemon or given to a Pokemon, like a protein or like a berry or something like that, it's going to ask you which slot in your party you want it to be, and those will be numbered zero through five. But the rest of this is all pretty self-explanatory. When you select one of these passive boost ones, like the shiny charm, it doesn't matter which Pokemon in your party you give it to because it's a, it's, it appears in the top left, it's a universal booster anyways. So you can select any Pokemon in your party to give it to and it'll just automatically kind of set it up right. And now finally, we just have some game information stuff. So if you want to know the species IDs, the Pokedex numbers, I believe they all align with the national dex numbers of official Pokemon. So that one's not super helpful. You can see the biome IDs to change your biome. You can show all the move IDs. So if you want to give a party Pokemon, one of the Pokemon in your party, a very specific move, you can do that. Nature IDs, similar kind of thing. So 21 through 26 are all just these IDs things. So you can see how the game references each of these moves, abilities, all that kind of stuff. So you can modify them yourself. Now finally, the last three. 27 through 29 
are just your final things. So once you're done editing everything, you would go 27, hit enter, and it's going to save your data and upload it to your server, which I'll show in a second once I'm done. And then 29, it'll just close the tool if it hasn't already once you type 27. But, because you are watching my video and you watched the end, and thank you very much for that, you actually gain access to a super secret special prompt that was made just for me and you guys watching the video. So, if you type LB for Ludi Brolo, that's me, and you hit enter, you're gonna gain access to a secret menu. This is so cool. This is so dang cool. You can do two different things in my secret menu. The first thing you can do is set non-available starter forms, which I'll show you what that is. And number two, you'll be able to remove enemy modifiers. Now, if you've played endless mode for long enough, you'll see that the enemy Pokemon, the wild Pokemon, are going to start getting some crazy tokens, crazy boosts. You could get rid of all of those instantly. So you type two and they'll just go bye-bye from your run. But prompt one is the really cool one. Say you want to start a run with Mega Mewtwo. Like, not Mewtwo, and then get a Mega Stone and a Mega Bracelet. Like, you just want your starter to be Mega Mewtwo. Well, then guess what you could do? You type Mewtwo, and it's going to show you the available forms for Mewtwo. So you can pick any of these, and just make sure you type it out, like, case-sensitive. So for Mega X, you'll type Mega-X, and then hit Enter, and you'll see what that's going to do once we get back into the game. So basically, what setting non-available starter forms does is it allows you to set your starters to forms that you would have to obtain throughout a run or something like that to just start off with them. So if you really wanted to go crazy, you could unlock Eternamax Eternatus as a starter. You could unlock any of the G-Max, Gigantamax Pokemon, any of the Mega Pokemon, all that kind of stuff. So that's the secret prompt. Now that I'm all done, I'm going to type 27. I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to say, hopefully updated data successfully. If it didn't, you'll just have to repeat all the steps through the tool and all that kind of stuff until it works for you. It's, you know, it's not a perfected science. But anyways, now, once you're back in your Poke Rogue, you're going to hit Control R. Just refresh the tab however you're going to. And let's see if the change has worked. When you'll see right here, we have the Eternamax form for Eternatus available as a starter to use right out the gate. And you can do this with any Mega, anything like that, even Zashin and Zamazenta, I believe you can unlock the crown form for each of them, the crown and whatever the heck the Zamazenta one is. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention is you can edit the cost of starters. So, like if you want to make Lugia cost one, you can just do that. And with that, that is pretty much it. Now, I didn't cover a lot of the prompts because I feel it's pretty self-explanatory. I think, especially if you've watched any of the previous videos, this should be a fairly easy tool to grasp. You just kind of follow prompts and that's pretty much it. As always, if you have any questions about the process, anything like that, let me know down in the comments and I will help you troubleshoot as best I can.